Hello, aloha and welcome back to my channel. My name is Keiko, I'm a mixed media artist and watercolor paint maker based in Hawaii. And today I got a package. Let's go and see what's inside. Among many other things, Hawaii has taught me to be patient, especially when it comes to packages. So I ordered this from Jackson's. It's a company based in England, but they now have a warehouse in Maine, on the mainland of the United States. Um, I still waited about three weeks, but hey, it's worth it because I finally get to try out the handmade soft pastels by Unison. So these guys are based in Northumberland, England. So over here it's not very easy to get my hands on this, so really excited about these ones. I also ordered two quill or mop brushes and these are Jackson's own brand and um, they were on sale so and you know these type of brushes are my favorite brushes so I just was really curious to try these out they have synthetic bristles and so far so good looking good I also ordered a few of my favorite colored pencils so I tend to not order a whole set because there are just some colors that I very, very rarely or never use. I reordered this one. This is a Carondage Luminance. It's one of my favorite colors. This is the 180 Malachite Green. This is the old one that I have, so it is already pretty short. So I figured, you know, better order another one and then these guys here are from Derwent. Derwent is, a English, is an English company and let me just say that in general I've had quite trouble with these Derwent colored pencils in the sense that a lot of them seem to break and snap pretty easily especially the chroma flow but these ones the color soft so so far I've had two colors and first of all the colors are magnificent and I have not had any problems with breakage or snapping so I figured I can give it a try and order a few more colors. These are really nice and soft, very buttery, kind of like Prisma color. And then I, I reordered another very favorite <laughs> pencil of mine which is uh, by Faber-Castell. It's an Albrecht Dürer olive green yellowish and again this is my old one the same one it's really short i actually put it in in this super convenient appliance here to make it last a little longer and then i have four new super color two these are water soluble just like the other one by the way the albrecht dürer and I just thought, you know, these colors just look super interesting. I love indigo in general, so I was curious about trying out this new indigo. And then some really bright greens. And this one here is charcoal gray. And then last but not least, I ordered a smaller version of one of my absolute favorite sketchbooks. This is by Fabriano. It's called Venezia. Um, I have... The large size sketchbook and I will use the other one that I already have today for this painting session. I'm gonna keep this for another purpose for later. Here is the large version of the sketchbook that I ordered. This is the Fabriano Venezia and it's actually bigger than letter size. And I started the sketchbook a while ago with some animal drawings and as you can see there is already use of soft pastels here in the background. However, these weren't the soft pastel in stick, but they were the ones in what looks like makeup containers. These are called pan pastels. And you can just use your finger to apply them, or you can use tools, or in my case, I just purchased this really inexpensive makeup sponges. I mean, literally like $1 for 50 or so of these and then you can apply these super easily. But yeah, I've been really curious to trying out sticks so I can do more of drawing rather than just using these for backgrounds. 
And looking at the colors that I ordered, mostly greens and blues, I thought we could do maybe an underwater scene today with some underwater animals. Let's open up the pastels, take a look inside. So, banderole comes off, then it's this cute little box. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, these are so tiny, <laughs> so cute. I actually went ahead and visited the website of Unison Color and there's a, a film about the history of that place and the family who founded it and it's really interesting and it's great to watch and if you are a pigment lover or you know even a paint maker like I am you can appreciate all that work that goes into it and the beautiful pigment mixes they have. So basically a soft pastel is a whole bunch of pure pigment and then a tiny little bit of binder, very similar to watercolor binder. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you definitely need to fixate this so it's, it's just gonna fall off the page, basically. I'm gonna talk later about how to fixate your soft pastels. Oh yeah, that's a lot of pigment. Can't wait. A few of these colors are very light, so they probably won't really show up well on the white paper. So I'm just gonna swatch a few of the slightly darker colors. This is the blue green number 10. Ooh. Oh wow. I mean, this is, this is, it reminds me of chalk actually, but it's a bit softer. Blue, green, 14. But yeah, these are loaded with pigment. <laughs> so if you don't want to get your hands dirty, I think the soft pastels are not for you. This is blue, green, earth. <laughs> blue, green, number six. Oh, okay. And this one is way more creamy than the last one. Such differences even in between the pastels. That's a gorgeous color. This looks like ultramarine, French ultramarine, but they call it blue violet 12. Yeah, that's definitely some kind of ultramarine. And then this is blue violet 18. Dark, dark navy. Nice. So I really, I have no clue what I'm doing here. I'm just experimenting. So definitely super easy to smoothen these out and smudge them together, which means Probably also mix them together. Oh, yeah. Cool. What an interesting medium. So you can draw just like with any other chalk or pastel stick. <laughs> ah, that's Leo going after a bird. They always fly away. He always tries to chase them. He never wins, but he never learns either. Anyways. <laughs> now, let's see. So if what I think is that these are just pigment and some kind of binder that's similar to watercolor. Let's see, we should actually be able to water these down too. All right, I just dipped my new number two quill brush from Jackson's in water. Let's see, oh yeah, that works. 
Oh wow, this is just like with watercolor. Huh, fascinating. All right, well, I'd say let's get into painting some animals before I just cover the whole page with with little <laughs> swatches and the like. It's very tempting. It's really fun to try out something new like this. I'm going to start with just laying out the shape of a Yeah, let's call it um Let's call it a coral reef. And I'm going to place a few animals loosely up here. Oops. Kind of really, I like the texture. I mean, I could go in and smooth these out, but honestly, I kind of like the rough texture here. I think the biggest problem is smudging when you don't want to smudge. <laughs> like, you know, inadvertently dragging your hand through. Okay, I will add some water. I have to say these do remind me a little bit of the neo color because you can still you can still see the texture of the pastel but then you can also blend it with a brush on a different note this brush is really to my liking it's not too soft it's a problem I have with a lot of quill brushes is that they're very floppy and soft. This one feels very good. Really like it. It's elastic, it snaps back. So it's pretty perfect for for my purposes. If you're more into soft brushes, then this might actually be a bit too elastic for you. Let's start with a hono. Hono is Hawaiian for sea turtle. And by the way, I have a whole tutorial about how to paint a hono. And I'll link it up here in case you want to check it out. So this sea turtle today is going to be much simpler. I'm going to try and keep it really simple and loose. You know, today's session is mostly about trying out a new medium and testing out a few of the new colors and the new brushes. So this one is the Carondash Supra Color, water soluble, and the color is called Light Olive. This is really nice. The cool thing about the water soluble pencils is that you can use them to sketch out things first, and then once you go over them, you can blend the outlines in because they're water soluble. So really nice to use these water soluble pencils instead of regular pencils for your sketch. I decided to whip out my watercolors as well just because I have mostly here blues and greens that I ordered. Especially those soft pastels, I only have blue shades and I kind of you know, want to test this brush out a little more just with some regular watercolor. And yeah, I really like it. has a nice tip as well, sharp point. And the other thing I wanted to test out is how the soft pastels work on top of a watercolor base. So 
So let's see. Let's use this light one. Yeah, I mentioned this earlier. I really like the texture. It seems to it seems to blend but not smoothly. So you do have a lot of the texture of the pastel. I like how opaque these are too. So there's Definitely, definitely a learning curve there, but I'm just really enjoying trying out different things here. I think at this point I really want to emphasize that I'm not looking for a realistic depiction in any of my art, so I really truly feel more like a experimental mixed media artist even though I do a lot with watercolor as well so I'm definitely not looking to create these smoothly blended soft pastel pieces depicting real life clouds etc so for me I'm usually really mostly looking for a lot of texture And not so much for the smooth blends. I do however, as I showed you before, I do like creating somewhat smooth blends for the background but even here you can see I went over everything with different other art supplies to create more texture. So I just thought, you know, I <laughs> almost like a disclaimer that I'm not using these pastels like they're I guess supposed to be used like all smooth and and blended and everything okay this is the other super color the charcoal gray that's a great color for the dark spots shadows and everything because it's not black I usually don't use black but I like having very dark colors to create more contrast. I usually use indigo, but this one, this one is great. It's kind of like a very dark brown. Actually, to me, it looks more brown than gray. This one is one of the color soft. So these are not water soluble. This is lichen green. And now this one looks also more brown to me. <laughs> and as I mentioned earlier, I do love how soft and smooth these are. So unlike the other ones, these are not water soluble, so I won't be able to get to get rid of this texture I'm creating here, but this that's on purpose because I do want my little honu, my little turtle, to have some texture here on the shell. Back to my charcoal gray. I'm gonna just go in and add a few more details. And as I mentioned earlier, I have a much more detailed or in detail tutorial about how to draw and paint these beautiful creatures. Just emphasizing a few of the shadows here in the in the shell. Okay, and let's see. I want to see if the white pastel shows up 
And it does. Let me let me try out something. Okay, looking at how in the turtle the white showed up really well, I figured it must show up really well on something dark, and it does. Ooh, that's really yummy. Very nice and opaque. I really have to get used to the chalky consistency of these. What a what a joy. I mean, you can really cover large areas super quickly. All right, back to my turtle. I'm going to add a few more shadows. Let's see, using this dark pastel. I'm really layering a lot of mediums here on top of each other, but it seems to work. I can also tell you this is probably not a good instrument for precision line work and details, or at least that's how I feel about it, using, using them this way. So I definitely say Larger pieces, larger formats. Just playing and having fun, laying down lots of pigment at once. Texture, blend, smoothing. And you can tell I'm really fascinated by these. I also have a little water jar here where it rinse off the, the pastel from my fingers because otherwise I would just be smudging the whole page. So I'm going to continue and fill this page using all my new supplies here and occasionally some watercolor as well. I'm going to put some music on because you know it's going to be just more of the same testing out new things and layering on top of each other adding texture and shadows. So, hope you enjoy!
naturally I could go on for hours adding more animals and details but today is a super super hot day here and I'm <laughs> you know I can feel that I'm getting a bit tired so I will continue the spread at some other time but just to to recap I used all sorts of different media today right now I'm applying some more soft pastel I tried laying down watercolor first and going over that with the soft pastel which worked really well I also really like how you can mix the pastels with water so they almost work like watercolor or neocolor too crayons I tried applying colored pencil on top that works pretty well as as well so I'm really looking forward to testing out this medium in the future trying out more things I think I've just barely scratched the surface here Just smoothing out some of the soft pastel here to kind of like blend it and now this part here really reminds me of when I use the pan pastels so they create a very similar effect So really very happy with how versatile the, the sticks are, the soft pastel sticks. And I do appreciate also how easy it is to work with the pan pastels because you immediately have such a smooth, nice appliance of color. <laughs> this is getting pretty wild. Did I did I just say I'm gonna stop? Well, as you can see, it's once I'm in it, it's kind of <laughs> it's hard to stop. But let me just make a final point here, so you can see I have soft pastel all over me. I did clean my hands off in between because otherwise you'll just smear everything. So I do recommend, especially when you work in a, in a sketchbook and you want to close it, to either put paper in between or the method I prefer is to use a finish or a varnish spray. And this one here is uh, Krylon. I'm not sure if this is available outside of the United States. I have also heard that it's okay to use hairspray. However, here, specifically here in Hawaii, the price of hairspray is almost equivalent to the price of <laughs> this Krylon varnish. And this one is non-yellowing and specifically for watercolor and oil and all sorts of artwork. So I tend to use this one. I recommend that you use it outside because it's kind of smelly. You have to shake it vigorously for 30 seconds and then just spray a thin, core, a thin coat over your artwork. Thank you so much for watching today and for joining. I hope you enjoyed this session. If you're watching this on the day of publication, I invite you to join my live session on Sunday and I'll leave a card up here so you can check it out. All right, happy creating. Until next time. Aloha! <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. Ah!